I had the craziest dream. I dreamt that Kendall got pregnant, she had a baby, she left for three months, and Fallon from KDWB filled in. Where did you get that idea? I don't know. I woke up, and you were still here. I never left. Roll the open. Here we go. Have a seat. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. You're sitting next to one on the couch, so let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Yes, this is not a rerun. We are actually back. This is a live show. It is, what date is it? It is the 15th, right? It is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Welcome to the Jason Show. Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It is good to be back. And let's start with this. Another reminder that not everything you read online is real. This is crazy. And considering I was just here, it's even crazier. So here's the deal. Over the weekend, a couple news sites posted a headline saying that Disney parks were planning to add maternity wards so that women could give birth in the parks. Thank you, audience. Uh, Disney delivery packages would include photos with Mickey Mouse after the birth. That's right. Plus, the baby would get free admission to Disney for life. I mean, I might have a baby for that, yeah. But unfortunately, folks, it's not real. It's just, it was made up. It was just made up by somebody. But again, I would have a baby for that. I really would. We have a lot to get to, so I haven't said this in a year. Leo, roll the music. Let's start the show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I haven't said this since the fall. Please welcome my sidekick sister from another mister. Welcome back to the show. It's Kendall, everybody. Hello. How you doing, friend? We're holding hands. You're actually here. In the flesh. How old is that baby? 30, 40? How, is that, uh, how old is that kid now? Half the time I'm like, are you five already? I swear, you're yeah. huge. It feels like you've been gone forever. I know, but that at the same time, it feels like I never left. How does it know? I don't but know. I, I want to ask. Yeah. Uh, how does it feel? I don't want you to get, I don't want, I don't want to make you sad. I'm not going to get weepy. I'm not pregnant anymore. I'm not emotional. Perfect, yeah. Mm -hmm. How did, did it, did it go fast for you? It did. I think especially over the holidays, it was so nice to be able to have maternity leave at that time because I could spend a lot of time with Kai. Here he is. There he is. <laughs> the last Vikings game of the season. So last one. Look at that hair. There he is. My little Kai guy. Um, But then once we were getting closer to coming back to work, uh, I I think it got you get really anxious you're like do I know how to do my job do, do I know how to not have a baby around me all the time can I speak like an adult yeah I don't know um a little red cheeks there he's cute uh anyway but so but then you come back and it's a little kind of like operating on e yeah <laughs> you just don't you're really tired. remember all of it and you don't remember exactly how to do it and then as soon as that was done that took about two hours it was like okay yeah did I as, leave? I don't, I don't even know. Did as I, I said to my buddy Alexis on the radio show, mm -hmm. you're raising a human being. You should yeah. be tired. You it know? Is. It's a weird And Jordan. Tired. You're raising Jordan, too. I, know. I mean, yeah. He's finally sleeping through the night, that Jordan. Is Kalinsky. he? That's my husband, in case That's no his, one gets yeah. the joke. <laughs> is he doing like, oh, because you, Kendall, mm -hmm. for people that don't know, out of this market, yes. Kendall's also beep, beep, traffic Tina. She's Hello. a traffic anchor. Mm -hmm. So is he, Jordan, getting up in the overnight? <sighs> well, okay. So Kai actually sleeps 12 hours a night. I, t I told you this when I came to visit. He's still 
still sleeps all night long. This has been going on since he was about two months old. Yeah. Great. DM me for any questions because I don't know how we did this, but we did it. Um, but Jordan is now having to get up a little bit earlier to get him into daycare and feed him and do all the things. But I get to watch on my little camera at home. So I'm like, hi, like a good baby, morning. I'm so creepy. Like it's a baby horrible. spy camera? Yeah, I watch my baby sleep. And I I'm have like, one for Colin. Buddy. So I can, I can, bond, whatever, I can just like, beep, beep, beep. What's Colin doing? Hi, That's right. Honey. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. He's, it's playtime. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Get his nook back in his mouth and he's cranky. Uh, speaking, mm -hmm. uh, speaking of playtime, Jeff, can you go get something for me uh, back there? Uh, I have a little, I have a little something. So I'll talk about this a little bit later. I just got back from a vacation. Mm -hmm. I was, of course, uh, mm -hmm. in my favorite place, the most magical place on earth. Yes. I was at Disney and I thought, I haven't seen Kendall. I haven't given her anything. So uh, but we I, have that blanket. This blanket's been This here isn't for like the a gift. This isn't the gift. I but like, I, not but I got something for the baby. Okay. Because I thought, you know, something from Auntie Jason. What is so this? no, it's cute. It's baby oh, Simba. Yeah. <laughs> It's a little snuggle Simba. Oh, for cute. Isn't that cute? Oh. That's adorable. I thought you were gifting me the Afghan that's been here for like. No, 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 no. Like, honey, I but aren't those cute? They have this a whole is collection. So cute. And Simba, you can take the little diaper. And Simba's my favorite. Did you just call this a diaper? It's just a blanket. I, I don't know. I, again, I don't have kids. I don't have kids. I don't. Okay. But yeah, it's a little plush so for. So cute. For. Uh, for the little for, Kai guy. For Kai, to, for Kai to sleep with, so. It's, okay, well, babies can sleep with these. Jason, we, you can I don't babysit. know. You Why? can never babysit. Well, then you can, can sleep with, with it. it. He can play with it. It's adorable. Do Thank whatever you. Kai wants with Simba. It's fine, Thank yeah. You. Let's get started, everybody. It's good to be back. Well, I haven't said this since last year. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. Well, tonight's the night for TV fans. The 75th Annual Emmy Awards is taking place in Los Angeles with uh, Anthony Anderson hosting. 11, that's going to be good. The show is supposed to happen, was supposed to happen in September, but uh, hello, writer strike, actor strike. Big winners are expected to be Succession, The Bear over there on uh, FX, and HBO's mega hit, The White Lotus. The show, now this is what we're loving. This is, uh, we are loving this. This idea is going to make me want to watch this even more. The Emmys plans to recreate classic TV show sets and reunite iconic casts. Whoa. It's going to be great. Assembling, um, you know, these iconic casts uh, with those that are still with us and, and bringing them back together and paying homage to uh, some groundbreaking creators. Now. I don't want to say I told you so, but, but mm -hmm. every season mm -hmm. I have said when we do our post-mortem on these award shows, mm -hmm. whether it's the Oscars or the Emmys, I, I've always said, producers, take this idea for free. If I'm watching those dumb shows, I think it would be fun to see bring out the remaining cast of, uh, of uh, Blossom. You know what I mean? Or, or Silver Spoons or, you know. Blossoms? Bring out the damn Waltons. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whoever's left, you know? Bring out the Love Boat. Bring out Julie and her clipboard. I want to see, you know, I want to. Why not? You know, bring out the cast of Cheers. And I like the set idea, too. I don't know which ones they're going to do, but I think that that would be really fun. Just, oh. You told me one. Jeff, which one? Well, probably Norman Lear. Norman Lear. They're probably going to oh. do a Norman Lear tribute. Right. So pr maybe I hope Rob Reiner and Sally Struthers might be there. Marla Gibbs, you saw there from yeah. the Jeffersons. Mm -hmm. is, you know, it, it, Marla is one of the last remaining. We lost Sherman Hemsley and Isabel Sanford. But uh, anyway, you can watch it uh, tonight. Next up, the countdown to Super Bowl 58 is underway and halftime performer Usher is getting ready this uh, weekend. Apple Music, because you know they're doing it. Pepsi used to do it, now Apple Music's doing it. They released this trailer. Let's look at this. Take that and rewind it back. Okay! <laughs> <laughs> My favorite Usher song is
Apple does a good promo. Mm -hmm. That's really good. I love it, especially the oven guy. And that is, I said, you were watching the trailer. Yeah. That song, mm -hmm. that you were that little girl. I was, I was that little girl with Usher's name written everywhere. Yeah. Like nine years old. Uh, this year, by the way, marks 30 years since Usher's debut album. What? 30, yeah, 30 years. The Super Bowl is in Vegas this year. It is going to air on February 11th. I'm going to, I'm very, at first, I like Usher, but I was mm -hmm. like, hmm. The man is t the man is an entertainer. Uh -huh. Everyone that has I know that have gone to the Las Vegas residence, he said it's it's a great show. Well, and to have a just giant repertoire of music. Yes. You know, everybody everybody's gonna hear at least one song and go. That you oh, know. Surely I know that song. Uh, I don't know. Surely. <laughs> Kendall's <Surely>. back, everyone. <laughs> Shirley, we're going to take a break. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment, everybody. Thank you. It's a whole collection of them. And Welcome back. Oh, it's so good to be back with you guys. It really is. It is really, really good to be back. We have a great studio audience today. I was telling them stories about my vacation that I probably can't tell you, sadly. But if you find me in a bar, I'll tell you. Anyway, um, <laughs> one of the things, hey, I have a lot of uh, thank yous and shout outs that I'll probably spread throughout the week. I got to give a shout out. You know, we're in Orlando. Hello, Orlando. My second home and uh, one of my second homes. And I had, I hurt my foot. If you follow me on Instagram, at Jason, <laughs> at Jason Matheson, I hurt my foot. And I got a lovely combination of plantar fasciitis and uh, Achilles tendonitis. Uh, one caused the other. And I was walking around Disney World in extreme pain, so I had to see a podiatrist in Orlando. I want to say thank you to Dr. Patel. But let me tell you a very quick story. And anybody that's had this, you know what I'm going to say and you're nodding your head. Um, the, the doctor looked at me and she goes, ooh, you have a combo. Mm -hmm. The plantar fasciitis, because I walked on it, created the the heel problem. I couldn't mm -hmm. put any pressure on my foot. I couldn't walk. You had all the itises. You couldn't walk. I had the itises. Mm -hmm. uh, so she looked at me, and here's what she said. She goes, Jason? I go, yes, Dr. Patel. She goes, you have another week of vacation. She goes, I want you to enjoy that. Here's what we could do. I could give you two pills. One pill for the plantar, one for the Achilles. Or I can give you a pill for the plantar, and I can give you an injection for the plantar fasciitis. And I said, doctor, look at me. I have a low pain tolerance. G give it to me on a scale. She goes, if a flu shot is a one, this shot is an eight. You did not, did you? She put, and she goes, and I have to leave it in for like 10 seconds. No. So she froze my foot. I agreed to do it. Like She's freezing my foot with the spray. And she was, and she's smiling. She goes, some people think this is more painful than the shot. And I'm like, don't smile at that. Uh, and, and she's doing that. And I go, doctor, can you please tell me when you're going to, and she jabbed me to confuse, no, to confuse me, to not let me anticipate it. Mm -hmm. I screamed a word that the FCC will not allow me to say for the full 10 seconds. And I went out to check out and the receptionist go, I'm glad nobody else was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It hurt. But. She helped. So Just thank you, it. Dr. Patel. I appreciate it. Yeah. Let's get back to the dish. <laughs> Let's get, so I, we will be, will occasionally be wearing a boot. So uh, the movie version, let's get back to the dish of uh, the musical version, rather, of Mean Girls is dominating, dominated the weekend box office. It opened in first place. It grabbed $32 million. And writer Tina Fey was on Sunday today and talked about what it was like revisiting her classic movie. Look. Was there any hesitation about going back to something that has become such a classic? I do think so much of what people respond to in the original movie are the performances. I did realize in the five years that we were developing the musical that millennials especially, like, they feel real ownership of the movie. Uh, yeah. And they were sort of like, you can't, we, we own this. And I was sort of like, <laughs> well, I, no, it's my thing. But they're like, no, it's our thing. And I was like, okay, fair enough. We'll share it. <laughs> we'll have joint custody. So, the movie was originally planned for the streaming site Paramount Plus. Before test, te uh, they did some test screenings, and people really liked it. But the reviews, though, mm, have been a little. E -e 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 -e. Mm. And I'm not seeing it because I own. You know, I, I I am the millennial who's like, that's our movie. Yeah. 
that, that you don't touch that. Well, and everyone's talking about the thing, this and with the color purple. Oh. The mm -hmm. fact that people are walking into the movie, I saw this on vacation, yeah. mad because they don't realize it's a musical because the marketing really didn't market that. No. So the color purple and Mean Girls, they're walking in going, oh, this is just going to be a modern retelling. No, it's a musical, mm -hmm. and people are getting mad. Mm -hmm. and, and some are walking out. I'm like, well, at least you can walk. Hello, boot. <laughs> yeah. More dish. More, Lucky you. That's right. Boy, I'm never taking it for granted, let me tell you. More dish now. It's considered one of the greatest nights in music ever, featuring dozens of the biggest stars coming together nearly 40 years ago. What am I talking about? Well, a new documentary is revealing the story behind We Are the World. Look. It was just a wish list. He said yes without knowing who was going to be on it. Bob Dylan. Stevie Wonder. Paul Simon. Cindy Lauper. Pat Midler. Billy Joel. Steve Perry. Willie Nelson. I think we have Tina. Sheila E. Diana Ross. Everybody was there. I'm at the house with Michael writing the song. He hums every part. Tapes and tapes of just layered and layered of him humming. There was tremendous pressure. Stevie wouldn't call me back. And the recording was in a couple of days. We now have a template with mumbles and no words. What do we want to do? We're talking to the world, so we have to talk this out. We'll start chopping wood. We stop for a minute. This thing's going to be chaos. Again for me? I don't want to open a can of worms. From that moment on, I was nervous out of my brain. People didn't know what we were going to be doing. There's really no excuse. There's a full-on fight going on. What am I supposed to sing? The clock is ticking, and we had so many disasters coming. Man, are you kidding? <laughs> This is so bad. Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson, uh, for the youngins out there, wrote that song that became We Are the World. It ended up raising millions for famine relief in Africa. Again, it's called The Greatest Sign in Pop. It's going to hit Netflix on January 29th. I am old enough to remember this happened. They recorded this, which was brilliant, uh, after one of the American Music Awards. Back then, the AMAs. To me, back in the 80s, the AMAs at that point were even bigger than the Grammys as far as popularity and ratings. People, I know kids, when I, because I was a kid then, we don't watch the Grammys. Mm -hmm. uh, we watch the AMAs. Why? Is this younger? or? It was younger, and it was, uh, I, I remember my papa and my mama uh, watched it. Uh, it, every, it was just the show. And then, you know, the Grammys reformatted anyway. They, they tape that after, which is great. They have all these they people all in the same building. Why not move them to a studio and do it? But I had no idea of the disaster <laughs> putting that. But think about all those egos. Uh -huh. You know, think about all of those talents and putting opinions. them all together. Mm -hmm. All the opinions, too, of just like, well, I think that I should do that instead of that person. And when you've got, like, okay, the Pointer Sisters and Bette Midler are your chorus. Yeah. <laughs> your chorus you, line. Yes. Sure. Okay. You got it. When you do something, you kind of have to leave the ego out there and remember it's bigger than you it's bigger right. than it's it was well about famine relief mm -hmm. next up i was off for a few weeks to start the new year and i missed out on some big stories out of hollywood it's time to play catch up with a round of what did i miss i want to <laughs> share yeah what happened <laughs> I mean, Fallon, I mean, Fallon left and you came back. I mean, uh, that, I missed that. I mean, Step you one. came back last week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to take, I want to give you my take on some big stories from the past few weeks that I did watch. I kept an eye on on the cruise. First up, last week's Golden Globes. Uh, Y'all know this. Host Joy Coy uh, got immediate backlash for some of his jokes, or most of them, as well as throwing his writers under the bus. Since then, several comedians, including Kevin Hart and David Spade, have said, uh, and Michael Che, said it's not worth ever, ever hosting award shows. Michael Che actually said that comedians should boycott those shows. <laughs> Can I say, th this is my take on this, and this is why I wanted to do the story. Look, I watched it, and it wasn't great. It wasn't great, but th th the fact that these celebrities don't have a sense of humor about themselves mm -hmm. and can't, release the corn cob for a moment and, 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 you know, like, just relax for a minute and, and lighten up and don't take yourself so seriously. It's, it's just ridiculous. It's like, you know, you may not like the joke. And I know I'm going to get Swifty hate, but I'm going to be honest. The, the whole Taylor Swift, it, her, the, the reaction shot of her not looking happy, mm -hmm. it would be way more endearing if you could just like laugh at yourself. It's not that big of a deal. It wasn't that crass of a joke. And I got to tell you, 
humor is rooted in, in some honesty. I'm sorry, but a lot of NFL fans feel that way. They don't like reaction shots of you. So lighten up and just laugh. And and you guys, everybody in that audience knows how hard it is to perform, whether on film or on stage. So how dare you give that guy who's just doing his best a hard time? Lighten up, clap, and then go to your damn party afterwards. It's just, it's like, yeah, I, I don't know. Still stuck on the visual of getting the corn cob out of it. Well, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Kendall's back, everyone. Hi. That's right. <laughs> Next up, let's talk movies. A new Star Wars movie is in the works. This popped uh, last week, featuring two characters from the mega hit series on Disney Plus, The Mandalorian. It's called. The Mandalorian and Grogu. Oh. I want to be in that meeting when they thought of that title. Uh, that's the real name of Baby Yoda, by the way. This will be the first Star Wars movie since The Rise of Skywalker, the first theatrical movie, and that was in 2019. Show creator John Favreau will write and direct this movie. Look, I, uh, yeah. Okay, middling response from mm. the, If I'm Disney and I've had trouble, Rise right. of Skywalker was not well received. No. They've had trouble getting a lot of Star Wars things off the ground. If I'm them, I would, this is a sure bet. Mm -hmm. People love The Mandalorian. Dave Filoni's also behind it. And, and, and John Favreau, the majority of the fan base who can't agree on anything, they believe in those two guys. And these two characters are beloved. Right. Uh, this is smart. If I'm Disney, I would put that one out first. And if you know nothing about Star Wars or anything, you at least know Baby Yoda. You know Baby Yoda. Right. But again, the title. Can we talk about that? You guys are paid millions of dollars, oh, and you Lord. get into a room, and you call it the Mandalorian and Grogu? That's, I mean, yeah. Let's spell it out for you. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, this thing is called The Jason Show, so, I mean, I can't really complain. Yeah. I'm a hypocrite. Yeah. <laughs> From movies to TV. This is something else I missed. We know uh, who will be checking into the third season of the HBO series, The White Lotus. This season, the new season, the upcoming season will take place in Thailand. And uh, with filming set to begin sometime this year. First up, so here's who we know is going to be in the cast. Parker Posey. Oh. oh. This is her and Best in Show. Oh, God, I love this movie so much with their adult braces. Anyway, uh, she's joining the cast. Also joining another one of my favorites, Carrie Coon. She is one of my favorites. We just interviewed her here on the show from HBO's The Gilded Age. Finally, British actor Jason Isaacs. He's best known for playing Lucius Malfoy in the Harry Potter movies. Uh, this cat, like Parker Posey in anything, sign me up. I love her. I don't like White Lotus. I know. I know. I'm the only person on the planet. Get Fallon on the phone. <laughs> I'm not into it. I'm sorry. Oh God, God. Don't run. You're wearing a boot. Come back. Oh, God. Okay. Oh. <laughs> That's the Fallon phone. Oh. So when we... The Shane phone. Uh-huh. Hell, we'll bring Ted back. I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> Put that right there. You're going to need it again at least two more times during God, the show. God, I missed you. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> we are back from our winter break, and we have so much more ahead. Coming up in just a little bit, how one little fluffy dog is doing big things. Meet Coda the Fluff. And how does our new little friend relate to our dear friend, Christopher Straub? And I'm back for my winter break, and I have stories to tell. That and more when The Jason Show continues. Welcome back. <laughs> oh. Shiver me timbers. You're going to love this. Um, she's described as the little dog doing big things. Coat of the Fluff travels the country bringing comfort and cheer to absolutely anyone who needs it. Look at this. <laughs> How cute is that? Well, that was Coda delivering toys to children in the hospital over Christmas in Daytona, Florida. This weekend, Coda brought some cheer here to Minnesota. Look. 
And look who's here, driving into our studio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Coat of the Fluff. <laughs> and by the way, keep applauding for her human Gina, everybody. Oh my God. Oh, you, you, you want to just set her up, put her on the desk? You want her on the desk? Yeah, put her on the desk. Who cares? You want We're getting chair? a new set next year. I don't care. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> Give it up for Coda, everyone. Hi, sweetness. Pretty cute. Hi, sweetness. Say hello. Oh, we. This is going to be a hard interview to do. <laughs> I, I just want to sit here. Hi, sweetheart. I said to the audience, I, did, I got back from Disney, you live in Orlando, yep. this looks like an animatronic. I thought that it looks so real, it looks so, oh my God. You wanna give her a high five? I do, can I give Get her a high five? Get her warmed up? Yeah. I'll put your hand out like this. Like this? High five. This high way. five. Oh, good Oh! Girl. Coda. Okay. Gina, Oops. how did, okay, so uh, Coda is a therapy, how did this start? How did, how did you know that Coda was gonna be like bigger than Drew Barrymore. I mean, yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. Um, honestly, I didn't. Uh, we just started doing pet therapy and really it just took off. Um, she's very effective and uh, she's impacted a lot of lives. So yeah. we're just running with it, seeing how far we can go and seeing what we can do. Okay, Gina, here's question number two. Um, <laughs> Out of a hundred. <laughs> Gina, uh, how did you discover that your dog can drive? <laughs> Well, I think she's just got both paws on the gas, so I just control the brake. Really? No, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I just, I put her in the car one day. I thought it'd be cute and funny to make videos for the hospital during COVID. Yeah. And she did awesome, but what was weird was people were pulling off the road to take pictures of her in my neighborhood. And I'm like, okay, this is something special. People really like it. So then I asked the hospital if we could train her and take her in and visit rooms. And we did, and it was a hit. So. You know what's even stranger? In our pre-production meeting, <laughs> Executive producer Jeff in front of Kendall, photographer Eric and I, uh, Jeff goes through the show and he goes, you know, this detail, we're going to be at the desk and he goes, da 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 and by the way, you know, um, she's going to have a remote control for the car and I went, yeah, I know, the dog's not physically going to drive the car. I mean, you know, there's a remote control for the car. Yeah, thank you, Jeff, for that info. People actually think that sometimes. They're like, is she driving? And I'm like, uh, I think I'd be making a lot more money if that was the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, sweetheart. Gina, can you tell the folks, this is, I, I, look, I would love to think, you're not just here to be on our show, we're delighted, but you're here for one of those special reasons. Can you tell the folks why? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, thanks for having us. Sorry oh my God, I'm earlier. thrilled you're here. Uh, this was very unexpected, but it's a pleasure to be here. Um, we actually came to Minneapolis, we got an email from a lady named Mary. Um, and Mary is uh, on the last couple weeks of her life. And so she emailed us asking if we'd come visit her because she wanted to meet Coda, that was her dying wish. Uh, there was, you, we get a lot of requests, I'm um, not gonna lie. And so at first when I got this, I wasn't sure if we could fulfill it. Um, but then I pulled some strings and we just happened to have some friends in town with Lindsay Moreland. Her illustrator's family lives here and just happened to be 20 minutes down the road. So oh. it was weird, it was like meant to be. There just happened to be a flight that was perfect, that lined up with work. Oh so my goodness. We came to see Mary. Did you, uh, I, I, I don't want to, Aaron's already there, already crying, but <laughs> that sign, she wrote, I, I'll take care of her in heaven. If, like, if that just doesn't warm your heart, I don't know what will. Yeah, I mean, I, I do pretty good holding it together, but that one got me. Um, what was it like for you? I mean, no, because you know what I mean. Uh, it's good to do Instagram and you get you clicks and you likes and hoots and whatever. Yeah. But when you know that your dog brings joy to someone who desperately needs it. My God, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Describe I mean, that feeling for me. It's hard to it's hard to put that in words. Honestly, I didn't expect her to say that. When she said it, I was uh, erotic because she can't really talk because of the condition yeah. she's in. Um, I wanted to cry because I think about code. I mean, dogs don't last forever. Um, she's nine years old, and when I told Mary she's nine, we'd probably have her until she's about 15, 16, best case scenario. She just pulled her pad out and said, I will take care of her in heaven. And I was like, okay. I can't. Like, <laughs> um, oh. So I, it, it meant oh. a lot. Oh. She's an amazing person. Yeah. So it was oh, a I'm so glad. And how yeah. serendipitous or the universe yeah. working as it should that it no flights and everything worked out. Everything lined that up is, perfect. That is fantastic. Everything lined up perfect. Um,
Now, I will say, because you again, uh, uh, Gina and Coda live in Orlando, mm -hmm. so on behalf of everybody in the state of Minnesota, I apologize for you being here now uh, with our weather. Uh, yeah, it's a little rough. Coda's uh, not a huge fan of the snow, not going to lie. Yeah. Because I, I just came back. Yeah. Can yeah. I ask you how you felt in the bridgeway off the airplane when you get that first? Because I heard flying from Florida yesterday, yep. everybody that took that first step off the plane, everyone was like, can we go back? Yeah. You know. I literally was texting my family immediately when I got off on the jet bridge and I was like I can't breathe <laughs> yeah it's it's I we're sorry yeah okay. hey Worth uh, it. can you tell you're nice enough to be here I want to give you a little plug uh, can you talk about CODA's nonprofit smiles for miles got it yeah so obviously we're up here it incurs costs to travel and see people and grant these wishes so um, I work full-time I just do this on the side thank goodness my employer is amazing and lets me flex my hours um, but we created a nonprofit called smiles for miles and so that people could donate um, and then also we have merchandise that the pro the proceeds a portion of them go to the nonprofit to support things like this so I have some gifts for you that oh. are some of these items that we sell to help raise money for our nonprofit and so here's Lindsay Coda Hi, Lindsay. nice to see you nice and so you. we've got a Coda mug oh well we'll replace that <laughs> mug right there okay look at this Oh, I love that. And okay. the cool part is the, the QR code on the back. It's an actual uh, link tree of resources for depression, suicide, all sorts of things for people. So oh, that's, that's huge. Fun. I will put it, leave this on the desk for a while. Coda's book, True Story. Oh, my God. I'll show you by Coda. Coda's like Prince Harry, has yeah. an autobiography. <laughs> I love it. And then calendars with all pictures of all her adventures and oh just some keychains and stuff designed by Christopher Schraub, our good friend. Well, speaking of that, <laughs> Gina, you could have this show. You just did a great <laughs> tease for me because Coda and Gina are sticking around. Uh, Coda actually, as we said, has her own stuffed animal, and it was created by someone very familiar to our show. We'll explain when we come back. Back after this. Thank you for being That's so nice of you to be here. Well, as I mentioned, Coda the Fluff uh, now has her very own stuffed animal. Books, calendars, mugs. Well, our frequent guest, our good buddy, designer Christopher Straub, is the, the guy who actually created the adorable Coda the Fluff stuffed animal. And Christopher joins us now. Hi, friend. How are you? How you doing? I know it's pretty just like this is the moment, right? Yeah. Like, this is <laughs> um, Coda's oh. taking all the focus. Oh, and by the way, I have a treat. It's not for you, Christopher, uh, but I have a little. I have oh, I'm bacon. A little treat. There we go. Um, how did this come to be? How did this come to be? I mean, this is so random, right? Like we both um, we both support Fraser. Yeah. We all we all know and love Fraser uh, Center for Autism Resources, and we were both doing an event for them, and I had designed some stuffed animals, and we featured them on the Jason Show before, and your audience. Has been incredible about supporting Fraser in that way, and then we had a conversation, and it just was like, okay, we need to, we need to connect. Christopher, the dots. is that the stuffed animal? That's the stuffed animal. Look at oh. that. And I've got one for you. Oh, look at, look at Coda with her little with her fluffy double <laughs> version. Look. So, when, so when we started talking, we said, okay, we we got to make this look like Coda. What are the things that makes Coda special? All right, it's those sunglasses. It's the red car. It's the little puppuccino, which is the little coffee that hangs off uh, the end. And I also, just noticed that. I did not. And also a driver's license. Oh. As the tag. And look at this. As the tag. Yeah. Oh, she comes out! And can I hand this to you? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. See. May I have this? Tail. That's, That's yours. yours. That's mine. That's yours. I'm putting, I'll put Coda up oh, there on wonderful. the shelf. I would walk over there myself, but it'll take the rest of the show for that to happen. So, yeah. Oh, how long? Okay. Yes. Now, let me, because you know I like the process. Right, we love a process. We love a process. Mm -hmm. How long? I know you. You're a talented fella. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But how long does this take you tip to tail? No pun intended. Uh, how long did it take? Uh, maybe a couple months to do yeah. all the sampling and sort of dialing it in because we, uh, we started off with an original idea and then you make edits and change things and once you see things in real life it might change your perspective on what we our expectations were and Gina let me uh, popular didn't this sell out 
Oh yeah, we only have a few left. I think there's 30 or 40, and then that's, that's it. That's it. This one. Yep. And uh, but but I I'll, have number 29. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll give you a secret. We've got more on the way, so okay. if you can get your hands on okay. one, get it now. And each time we do a production, we're making them limited edition, so li different details are going to change because we love a detail. We, we do love, love a detail. A, a, a variant. Because you know what's going to happen. Yes. You're, the show's airing now. It'll uh -huh. air an hour later on in Orlando. Mm -hmm. People are going to get frustrated if they can't get them. Like, mm -hmm. why did you? So yeah. they are. So don't get frustrated. More will be coming, right? Oh, That's yeah. right. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. yeah. And then the proceeds, of course, of course go to yep. uh, Dakota and all the wonderful kindness she's spreading. Yep. And you said, you know, Jeff was telling me, Jeff was telling me, and I love this, people are, a lot of people buy two. Yep. Right, and, and give one away. Yeah, so currently we're out of the donation stuffies just because we're out. They've all been claimed. <laughs> They've been claimed. Yeah. Yeah. People donated over 120 of these for Coda to hand out at the hospital for little kids. Yeah. So that was awesome. We're going to do that with every run of stuffed animals. Yeah. Take a couple cases and set them aside. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Look at this picture. I'm Is sorry. that the Daytona Speedway? Is that the Daytona Speedway? Yes. Yeah. Oh. And that's FBI in uh, D.C. Yep. That is so good. Yeah. Well, anytime, no matter the reason, you come back to Minnesota, sure. please come back and visit Thank us. Thank you. Christopher, Thank you. Always whenever fun. you're back yeah. in Eden Prairie, come yeah, yeah, visit yeah. us. Yeah, 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 I'm here. I love you're you. are a good guy, yeah. Christopher Straub. Uh, to learn more about Coda, order a stuffed animal, check out other Coda-related merch, head to CodaTheFluff.com. One more time for Gina, Coda, and Christopher. We're going to take a break. Unbelievable stories when we return back in a moment. So damn cute. <laughs> Can we just do that for the rest of the show? Yeah. Just have Coda drive around. Look at Coda. That dog so is so cute. My She's mom is so losing cute. her mind right now. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, as I said at the top of the show, I was gone uh, for three weeks. I spent a couple weeks in my second home over Orlando. Uh, and over the course of the next week, I'll sprinkle in some funny stories that I think you'll enjoy. Uh, but the third week, last week, I took my a second cruise of my life. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I was on the, I did Royal Caribbean one year. That's where I met the Brits. Hello, Joe. Hi, Beth. Uh, that work at Walt Disney World. And, uh, and then this time we did celebrity cruises. I was on the Celebrity Apex for those that are cruisers. And uh, we had uh, four different excursions. It was a seven-day cruise. We did uh, Honduras, Grand Cayman, uh, Cozumel, uh, and Belize. And uh, I'm going to focus this little segment just on Belize. I have some lessons. I have some life lessons. Mm -hmm. I have some uh, consumer tips for you. Oh. Uh, all in one little four minute segment. Look at that. And here's my first life lesson. Yes. Uh, uh, Leo, take five. Okay. Jason doesn't like guided tours. <laughs> <laughs> so I did an excursion. Oh, no. And I picked an excursion because it sounded fantastic. It was uh, Explore the Mayan Ruins. Uh, <laughs> With a <the> boot? <laughs> <laughs> Where's my phone? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I was in a boot. Uh-huh. Uh, so, but I bought this when I wasn't in a boot. So uh, they described it as, ooh, and I got the premium one. There's a one that where you just look at a picture of a, of a Mayan ruin. <laughs> this one was fancy. It said, you're going to explore, and you're going to have lunch, mm -hmm. and on the way, you're going to go through a, uh, a river safari. <laughs> The River Safari was a boat ride to get to the Mayan ruins. Mm -hmm. So we get, we, find, we get in the bus, we get off the boat, we get, we, 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 uh, get on the tender, uh, and we get to the bus. And uh, there's like 50-some 50, uh, 50 people on this bus. And it's like a, a retrofitted Greyhound. And this is a cruise excursion. And I get on the, uh, on the bus, and this is what they also don't tell you in the fine print. Uh, so the tour guide gets on, <laughs> and he says this. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to your Mayan Ruins Day. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Jay. We're going to be traveling for an hour and a half to the Mayan Ruins. <laughs> I looked at Colin, and I started singing the Tammy Wynette classic, D-I-V-O-R-C-E. I'm like, did you pick this or did I? An hour and a half. Uh -huh. So for the next hour and a half, our tour guide 
uh, said, ladies and gentlemen, every time he started a sentence, he, he would start it with ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Belize. Uh, over here is this, over here is this. And this is the part where I thought, oh my goodness. Uh, he, he goes, uh, and now we're going to welcome the second tour guide. And this teenager walks up. This teenager uh, walks up, and she's uh, young. And she walks up. As and teenagers are. Uh, teenagers are. And she goes, hello. She goes, first thing I'm going to tell you is, I am 16, and I'm okay to be here. <laughs> So was she not okay? It was like a school day or something. So then, then she proceeded, and, and then she proceeded to show us. She's like, oh, "Here are all the animals that you may see." Now I'm going to stop the show and say this is where it gets funny for Colin. I was miserable because I don't like tours. Colin was miserable because they start listing the animals that we may see. Colin hates lizards. So then the tour guide starts talking about this. So the best way to eat an iguana. <laughs> so, because in Belize you eat iguana. It's oh. like it, it, you do. You eat the green, green iguana. I knew that. <laughs> not the blue ones. Not, just the, the, not green ones. the green one. So the young lady's up there. She tells it's okay for her to be there. It's a school day. And then she goes, "Here are some of the animals that you're going to see." <laughs> so she lifts up a piece of paper about that big, and she goes, "Here's a list of all the monkeys you're going to see." And Colin, because he knows me, and I'm miserable. Like I just want to jump out of the bus. And he's trying to find anything to make me happy. And he knows I love monkeys. And this is Colin's vain attempt to make me happy. He goes, Jason, she said monkey. <laughs> like I'm four. Yeah. So, uh, and I said, they, and, then the, and then the teenager goes, pass this back. So she's handing, so I went to pass the... <laughs> I went to pass the sheet back, uh -huh. the, old, the older couple behind me sleeping, so I couldn't pass back. So we get to the ruins, here are the ruins, uh, I took some video for y'all. The ruins, oh. yeah, the ruins, now here, uh, and not just being funny here, but the ruins were beautiful. There were three different temples that we saw. Um, as you can see, they allowed tourists to climb yeah. uh, some of the ruins. A surprise. Uh, my boot wearing gay ass said no. I was like, no. This, this homosexual stayed on the ground. I was like, no. Because people, people were tripping. People were tripping. I'm like, I, I'm not going to put my other foot in a foot in a boot. Uh, that was a really cool uh, god that was uh, uh, carved into one of the temples. Okay. So here's my advice. And I'm, I'm being funny, but I'm also being, my, I'll end on a consumer advice. Just really read exactly and ask questions exactly what's going to be taking place on these excursions mm. because you never know when you're going to be stuck on a bus ride talking about eating iguana. There we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Positive though, the, the good people, the people of Belize were fantastic. It, it's a beautiful, we were in a beautiful part of Belize. Um, and, and, our, and our tour guide, he was a nice guy. I just, this is about, this is, this is my issues. Not, I realized I don't like guided tours. Jason doesn't have much of an attention span. No, I, that too. I don't. I do not. It's like, so it's, yeah, I, it's an unbelievable uh, lack of attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. See us this week. Go to eventbrights.com and click on the Jason Show. We have all new shows for the rest of the month. I ain't going anywhere. Uh, I just, again, we joke with each other because mm -hmm. we're like siblings, mm -hmm. but I want to be uh, sincere and say for my, it's really, really good to have you back. It's it really is. Back. It's really good Thank to have you, you. back. It's good. Thank yeah, you. it's great. It's great to have you back. It, it really is. Tomorrow, another weeknight meal hack with my buddy, social media star Lisa Breckenridge. She's showing us how to transform a Trader Joe staple into a full, delicious meal. I can't wait to talk to Lisa, but right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day. I miss you all.